In this report, I share the cost of living in a cool mountain gem in Southeast Asia, including rents, utilities, groceries, restaurants, transportation, and other expenses for low to middle range living costs. Last month, we put our feet on the ground in the cooler mountain area of Cameron Highlands of Malaysia. I was last here eight years ago in 2016, and it is still just as beautiful. In this report, I'll show you the food we ate, the things we did for fun, the cost of living here, and where it is in Southeast Asia. Malaysians go to Cameron Highlands when they need a break from the heat at sea level. Cameron Highlands is roughly 200 kilometers or 120 miles north of Kuala Lumpur and 50 miles east of Ipoh in Malaysia. The passenger trains run north and south through Malaysia and you can jump off in Ipoh, Malaysia and take the bus east up to Cameron Highlands. The various small towns of Cameron Highlands range from about a low of 800 meters or 2,600 feet above sea level to a high of 1,600 meters or about 5,200 feet above sea level. It is the higher elevation that gives you the cooler temperatures. No matter where you decide to live or retire in Southeast Asia or the world, you'll want a break from normal life and to experience other places. And when you need a break from the heat, just head to one of the colonial era hill stations. Throughout the world, in the former colonies of Europe, uh, the colonialists established summer residences in the mountains to stay cool in the warmest months. There was no air conditioning back then, so they headed for the hills. So the highlands or hill stations is where you go for cooler temperatures. In Malaysia, that's Cameron Highlands. In Vietnam, there's Dalat. In Thailand, there's Pai. And in the Philippines, head up to Baguio. There are others, of course. We provide reports on many of these hill stations so expats know where to go when they want to cool off overseas. But some expats prefer cooler weather year-round, so they decide to just stay in these hill stations year-round. You can use rumtorio.com to find and book the bus or train to Cameron Highlands. There's something magical about the Cameron Highlands, whether it is the tea plantations, the beautiful green surrounding landscape, or the laid back way of life. The locals are very sweet and accommodating, and there is a great selection of restaurants, especially given how small these communities are. One of the great things about Malaysia in general is that there are three different ethnic food types available at local prices, Malay, Chinese, and Indian. There are also pricier international foods to choose in case you feel like something from home. Also, make sure to tour the tea plantations, the mossy forest, and the strawberry gardens. They have a day tour that visits all three for $12 US per person. This is not an affiliate link. I have over 1,000 videos showing you the best places to retire cheap in paradise overseas. My videos are organized by country at my Vagabond Awake YouTube playlist. You can browse through my videos by country and find your favorite places overseas. I have reports all over Malaysia, including Kuala Lumpur, Penang, Malacca, Ipoh, Langkawi, Perinthian Islands, and Borneo, Malaysia, including Sabah, Cebu, and Sarawak. But today I'm talking about Cameron Highlands. I will now share my Cameron Highlands desirability factors, such as walkability, internet, food, weather, things to do, social considerations, visas, real estate, expat community, and healthcare. But first, I'll share living cost estimates ranging from low to middle for Cameron Highlands. If you would like to learn how I fired my boss and traveled the world for 16 years and how I pay for things, grab a free copy of my ebook. Okay, estimated cost of living in Cameron Highlands, Malaysia. Here's my estimated cost of living converted into U.S. dollars if the two of us move to Cameron Highlands year-round on a tight budget. We also include more typical expenses we have heard from other expats to give you another data point that I will call the middle range. 
Okay, Rince, I found the above unfurnished three-bedroom, two-bath condo, uh, I should say partially furnished, for 2,000 ringgit per month, which is about 422 US per month on a 12-month rental rate for 824 square feet. If you rent for a shorter period of time on Airbnb or booking, it would be more expensive, of course. If you rented a single family home or townhouse, the rent would be higher, possibly 600 per month. Here's the process we use to find great apartments. So we will show you a table of all the expenses in a moment. We will use 422 per month for our lower rent estimate and 600 per month for the middle cost of living estimate for expats that want a little more space. Okay, utilities. We estimate that the year round average for our utilities would be about 40 bucks per month US at this elevation. The utilities would be more for expats that rent larger, the larger space would be around 70 bucks per month. You wouldn't need much air conditioning here, if, if any. Okay, groceries. We normally shop for fresh fruits and vegetables in wet markets to save money rather than the more expensive grocery stores, but also shop in grocery stores for things like shampoo and detergents, uh, skincare products. We estimate about 300 per month for groceries. Other expats are likely to shop more often in the expensive grocery stores, often spending more like 400 per month on groceries. Okay, restaurants. We would go out to eat two or three times per week, mostly in more local style restaurants, uh, eat, eating the local ethnic foods, Indian, Chinese, and Malay, for about three to five dollars per meal, but also in tourist or expat style restaurants for around eight dollars per meal per person US. If you add that up, we would spend around $40 per week or 160, 160 per month in restaurants for the two of us. Other expats are likely to eat more Western style foods in expensive expat style restaurants and less in local style restaurants. So they would likely spend around 300 per month for two people in restaurants. Okay, cell phone data. The cost to recharge our prepaid smartphone service was $12 per month. My Android phone will act as a hotspot so we can both be on the internet at the same time when we are out of the house together. Other expat couples are likely to buy two prepaid SIM cards, so they would spend $24 per month. Okay, laundry. Apartments in Malaysia almost always have clothes washing machines and people hang their clothes in Southeast Asia. Since the laundry detergent is included in our grocery bill, there's no additional expense for laundry. Okay, drinking water. Many apartments in Malaysia now have water dispensers, so we often pay nothing for drinking water here. Internet, 100 megabits per second up and down is about 130 ringgit per month or 27 US for in-home Wi-Fi. Okay, transportation. We would take local taxis about twice per week for about $4 each way or $8 round trip each time, but we would walk whenever possible in our neighborhood to stay healthy. We estimate about 80 per month dollars for the two of us for transportation. Other expats might walk less and spend more on transportation, so $120 per month. Alcohol, which is optional. Local beer in the local bars and restaurants is about $4 US about $2 U.S. in conven convenience stores, and about $1.67 U.S. per beer in grocery stores. So we would spend about $160 per month on alcohol for the two of us. Many other expats would spend a higher amount for imported foreign or craft beers in expat bars, so about $240 per month for two people, assuming they're not into imported whiskey or wine. Entertainment, which is optional, we would budget about 200 per month for entertainment for the two of us. We generally enjoy doing more do-it-yourself kinds of entertainment. So expats would spend a little more than us, maybe 300 per month for two of them for the middle range. Okay, estimated cost of living in Cameron Highlands uh, for the low range rent, 422, 40 for utilities, 30 for groceries, 160 for restaurants, 12 for cell data, zero laundry, zero drinking water, 27 for internet, 80 bucks for transportation would be $1,041 per month. If you add the optional alcohol, it would put you at about 1,200 per month. If you add the optional entertainment, you would be at about $1,400 per month for the low end. For the middle, uh, you're looking at about $15.41 per month for the basic costs, $2.40 for alcohol, which would put you at 
81 and 300 for entertainment, which would put you at about 2000 per month uh, for the middle range. The above lower estimated cost of living would be if the two of us lived in Cameron Highlands on a tight budget. The middle estimate is just an example of what other expats might spend if they moved here. To understand what it would cost you to live here, you must put your feet on the ground, see how you would choose to live, eat, and entertain yourself, and add it all up. It doesn't matter what anyone else spends because we are all different. Okay, Cameron Highlands, Malaysia, livability factors. Before you move anywhere outside your home country, make sure to create a list of things that you must have for your happy retirement or living. Here are my livability factors, and I'll rank each as high, medium, or low before assigning an overall retirement desirability score to Cameron Highlands. Okay, walkability, I would say medium. This one needs an explanation. Our favorite two neighborhoods in Cameron Highlands are Tanarata and Bringchang. No matter which one we decided to live, we would need to go to the other from time to time for restaurants or shopping. Since they're about five kilometers apart, we would use local taxis, bicycles, a scooter, or a smaller used car. So either neighborhood alone is totally walkable, but you would probably need more than just your feet to get between them. Okay, internet. I would say hi. Malaysia has great internet speeds for very little money. In Cameron Highlands and in many other parts of Malaysia, we average around 40 to 100 megabits per second up and down. Okay, food. Hi. We stayed in the Tanarata area of Cameron Highlands. You'll find smaller grocery stores there and a fruit and vegetable market or wet market. But the larger expat style store is in Centrum Mall in Brincheng five kilometers away. There is also larger wet markets in Bincheng. So if we stayed here long term, we probably would live in Bincheng. Also, the available restaurants and pricing seem slightly lower there. The alcohol and beer and wine is heavily taxed in Malaysia. That's why it probably seems more expensive to you. Okay, weather. I would say hi. The temperature is fairly consistent and perfect in Cameron Highlands year round. Daily highs range very little from about 78 Fahrenheit in December to 82 Fahrenheit in May, which is 26 Celsius to 28 Celsius. There are two rainy seasons, April through May, where it rains more than 10 inches or 270 millimeters, and September through November, when it rains about 112 inches per month or 300 millimeters per month. The rest of the year, it rains about four to eight inches a month or 109 to 203 millimeters. Okay, things to do. Hi, if you're interested in outdoor life like hiking, biking, fishing, and camping, Cameron Highlands will be your cup of tea. You can expect beautiful rolling hills and a dense forest of lush green trails. You could also hang out at the Central Mall for some great people watching, visit the temples, take a yoga or martial arts class, learn how to cook local foods, or head to Georgetown, Penang, or Kuala Lumpur for long weekends. Social considerations. It seems that everywhere you go here, people speak English. It was a former English colony, and they continue to teach English in schools. The main local language is called Malay. There are three major ethnic groups here, Malay, Chinese, and Indian. All three groups speak their ethnic languages, and most also speak at least some English if they're not fluent. The people are very friendly and nice. I don't believe you'll face any additional challenges because you are a foreigner. Okay, expat community. You'll see expats from all over the world here, but it is still relatively undiscovered by Westerners as compared to Thailand or the Philippines. There are no Facebook pages that cater exp explicitly to Cameron Highland expats from overseas, but there are a few from other parts of Malaysia. I'll provide links here. These online expat communities are great for learning all about things that expats want to learn when they first move overseas. Okay, medical. Malaysia is one of the better medical tourism countries in the world, in my opinion. Possibly even as good as Thailand or better, but with more reasonable prices. They have both great healthcare here 
and at and at reasonable prices. There's a hospital in Cameron Highlands that offers very generalized services. So you may need to travel to either Ipo, Georgetown, Penang, or Kuala Lumpur for specialized medical services. The staff at the hospital in Cameron Highlands will likely stabilize you and then direct you to the proper specialist if they're not available locally. Okay, tourist visa. Foreigners from many Western countries are given three months visa exemption when they enter Malaysia. In many parts of Southeast Asia, you can just do a visa run to get additional time, but Malaysia has started to crack down on their visa runs. Best I can tell, after talking to several expats who have done it recently, if you decide to do a visa run after your first 90 days here, you should stay out of Malaysia at least 90 days or before attempting a re-entry. Okay, retirement visa. Malaysia has 13 states and three federal territories. Two of those states, Sabah and Sarawak, have reserved the right to set their own terms for retirement visas. That means that there are three different retirement visas you can apply for in the country of Malaysia, which you can read in details, link provided. In summary though, Sabah State Retirement Visa, you have to complete and submit the required application and documents. You have to deposit 200K RM, which is about 42,000 in a Malaysian bank. You have to spend at least 30 days per year in Sabah. It is initially issued with a five-year term renewable for five years. The visa is on hold right now, waiting for final government approval and possible changes. Sarawak State Retirement Visa. You have to complete and submit the required application and documents. You have to deposit 150K ringgit or about 32,000 US in a Malaysian bank and prove 7,000 ringgit or 1,500 per month income. You have to spend at least 30 days per month in Sarawak. You would also need a certificate of good standing from your home country and a clean bill of health. Peninsular Malaysia Retirement Visa. You have to complete and submit the required application and documents. You have to deposit 1 million ringgit or 210,000 US in a Malaysian bank, but no proof of monthly income is required. You have to spend at least 90 days per year in Peninsular Malaysia. You would also need a certificate of good standing from your home country and a clean bill of health. There are also some VIP retirement visas for Peninsular Malaysia, which we will not cover here. This visa, their normal retirement visa, is on hold now, awaiting parliamentary review and approval. Uh, since you're not required to live in any of these states for the entire year, you may wonder if you're allowed to live in other parts of Malaysia during the other parts of the year. I've not found a direct answer to that question, but I can tell you that when we flew from Sabah or Sarawak to Men Peninsular Malaysia, since that is not an international flight, Immigration in the peninsula of Malaysia did not ask to see our passport at all. It seemed to be just like when you fly between states in the U.S. or fly between countries in the Schengen zone. Hopefully one day they'll clear this up. So I would probably get the Sarawak visa and spend 30 days a year there as required and then just spend most of my time in Kuala Lumpur or Penang or anywhere else I wanted until I was told otherwise. Okay, real estate. Foreigners can own 100% of a residence in Malaysia so long as the price is over 1 million ringgit or 210,000 US. The weird thing is that the rents are so low here that it might be smarter to rent than buy. The place we were renting, for example, in Kuala Lumpur was 700 per month, sells for about 250 US. If you keep the 250 in the market and, and average 6% return, you'll make twice as much money in the market as the rent you would save by buying. Plus, I do not recommend buying until you have lived in any foreign country for at least two years. If you're finding any value here, could you please like, comment, share, or subscribe? That would help our channel grow faster. Okay, Cameron Highlands, overall desirability score. I would say hi. I could see myself living in Cameron Highlands if I were into cooler mountain life in a smaller town. But I like living more in a city with more things to do. So I would pick Kuala Lumpur or Georgetown Penang over Cameron Highlands. But right now with the visa situation, I would be hesitant to retire in Malaysia until they clear things up. Okay, what would it cost you to live in Cameron Highlands? To get a better understanding of things you should add to our estimated cost of living, 
watch this video, nine reasons you can't retire on a thousand per month. Most people will likely be unable to retire in the lower range estimate above. I give example reasons why in this report. Plus, the other report explains how to avoid coming home early with your towel between your legs. There are links to these reports uh, on the Cameron Highlands full report below. You should also add anything to the table that you spend money on in your home country that's not listed in the table. Presumably, you find those things necessary in life. To do that, visit Numbio for Cameron Highlands and add anything not mentioned in the table. Never move anywhere until you visit it first personally to verify the living costs for your lifestyle and needs. And you should do that with an exploratory visit with your feet on the ground. I'm not guaranteeing these prices. These are just my notes and estimates from the time of my visit and this post. Your costs will likely be drastically different depending on your lifestyle and the time since this post. Many of the expats we meet living overseas are self-insured for medical care. That means that not everyone buys health insurance when they move overseas. That probably sounds crazy to many of you. I didn't carry medical insurance for most of my first 17 years living overseas, but last year I bought medical insurance. If you're wondering what it costs and what it covers, watch my medical insurance video at this link. This is not an affiliate link. More typical expat living costs in Malaysia range from about $1,500 to $4,000 per month, but people spending that much often have higher incomes or pensions. They often report spending more on accommodations, entertainment, eating out more, traveling, and alcohol. Many also have more expensive cars, houses, or apartments. Uh, for a link to where we stayed in Cameron Highlands, click the first link in the notes below this YouTube. At that link, you'll also find Cameron Highlands bars and restaurants uh, where we ate and the tour that we took, where the Tanarata bus terminal is to go to and from Ipoh or Kuala Lumpur, uh, a temple we visit and the Centrum Mall we talked about. Also find our wet market where we shopped and our, Kyle and our Cameron Highlands tour, uh, which was $12 per person. Um, the roads are on this tour are generally not drivable, so we're re recommending a tour that link also is not a affiliate link. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, for the full report, click the first link in the notes below this YouTube video or come by Vagabond Buddha and check out all the reports we have of places to retire cheap around the world. This is Dan of Vagabond Awake, the YouTube channel for VagabondBuddha.com. Have a beautiful day.